Hi, my name is Larry Ridley. We're here to demonstrate the rhythm section and the roles of each of the players in playing different styles of jazz. And one of the main ones that is very much of importance is the Calypsonian attitude. I call it an attitude because it's a part of a whole cultural lifestyle of people who come from the West Indies that's very much infused into the role and the history of the evolution of jazz. I'm pleased to have Richard Wines on the piano and also Greg Buford on drums. Together we are the Jazz Legacy Ensemble. There you have an example of the calypso, and each of us has a particular role to play. The bass, of course, is playing like a sort of an ostinato figure behind and keeping it very simple so that the rhythmic aspect of the calypso is very focused. The drums, explain what you're doing on the drums. Well, in Trinidad, the drummer would, there would be two bell parts. So I was trying to imitate that as I was keeping the jazz hi-hat going. So just trying to recreate a percussion section from Trinidad. And what about the piano, Richard? When I'm playing background for another soloist, I play something like this. Well, the main thing is keeping the rhythm going because the calypso is also associated with a dance movement that's very important to what the calypso is all about. So what we're trying to do is always give the feeling of the motion 
and the direction of the music so that anyone who is dancing and ad-libbing their various kinds of moves in terms of dance movements a la Calypso, that uh, we don't take away from the dancers, but then we form a marriage between what we're doing and what the dancers are doing at the same time. So I think that this is very important. One of the things, as Greg pointed out, about the drums is the, the different timbres of each instrument. To hit each of the drums, Greg. Well, so in Africa, there were drum groups, and, and one person would play each drum. So with this piece, it's, it's a calypso. They were, like I said, different people playing different instruments. We have, we have one, two, three, four different sounds. And, and as Larry said, our, our main thought is to play behind someone dancing. I almost always imagine a dancer, and usually there's someone dancing, but I always imagine even when there's no dancer, there's a dancer in my mind. <laughs> it's very, very important, and I think that that, that goes throughout the entire range of, of jazz styles in terms of the accompaniment. People sometimes, uh, younger people in particular, don't realize that the jazz music and the dance work together because early on all the musicians played for dances and the dancers would be improvising while the musicians would be improvising. Very, very important. That was really accentuated in places like the Cotton Club in New York, but not only just here in New York, but it was all across the country wherever there were people, particularly in the African-American neighborhoods where people would come in and dance and be involved. And, the musicians, we always ad-libbed our solos and what our interaction was about with the spontaneity of what the dancers were doing on the floor. So that's something that's very important. I think that it's important for us to stress that so young people who are going to be performing in these idioms understand that you have to constantly be sensitive to what the dancers are doing so that what you're doing does not take away, but that you don't inhibit yourself either. But that interplay, and it makes for a great experience, and that's why jazz and dance are so synonymous with each other. Let's play another chorus, uh, just to close out on this particular segment. We'll just do a thing, and each of us will play a solo.